Hey, morning everybody. Joe Munoz here. Hope you're doing well and your family's doing well. Uh, I just want to share something with you here on flaps and slats. Um, let me just throw these festive pillows here on our couch <laughs> real quick. We're getting our, uh, we're getting ready for the open house. We're getting a, um, Christmas tree set up back over here. Obviously we have some other decorations that I just threw here. Uh, we're getting ready for an open house December 10th. It's going to be a big, it's a big day, man. It's a big day. One Step Prep Academy is born and we want to invite you and your family, friends, colleagues, coworkers here to share in some hors d'oeuvres and some drinks with us. With that, uh, let me get back to no flap, no slat discussion. I do need always my marker and my whiteboard. Um, flaps, folks, let me first explain a couple of, a couple of things. Um, flaps traditionally, those of you that are maybe new to airlines, airliners, right, uh, transport category aircraft, flaps historically for you have always hung off the trailing edge of the wing like this, right? We do have also what's referred to as a leading edge flap, particularly on the 737, um, speaking for here, where we have on the inboard side, inboard of the engine, I'm trying to hold the camera and draw one hand and so forgive me there. Um, basically, inboard of the engine, if this is your engine over here, inboard of the engine we have what's referred to as leading edge flaps. Outboard of the engine we have leading edge slats, okay? Now this is on the 737NG and also the 737 Classic. Really the 200, the Max, all the 737s are basically the same. They do have leading edge flaps and slats. Um, now, some airplanes have leading edge flaps, others only have slats. The difference is really, just so you understand, slats are always on the front of the wing. Uh, leading edge flaps could be on the front of the wing, of course. Traditionally, as you heard me say, flaps are typically on the trailing edge. But from a perspective of what the difference is from a leading edge flap to a slat, a slat extends typically forward like this to increase the overall wing size or camber that's kind of the top of the wing here, so that we can fly slower. A leading edge flap, you will notice, extends down. Those of you that fly the 737, when you're doing your pre-flight, notice that your leading edge flaps, they actually extend down more so than forward. The slats go forward to increase wing size. The, the flaps go down to redirect ram airflow over specifically the wing route, which is why they're inboard of the engine. Uh, so there's a whole discussion more uh, in length that I can go into with that. We typically do it our systems course, but one thing I really want to share with you is the following. Um, flaps and slats are not used to slow down. They are used to fly slower. Let me say that again, and let me just try to make that as clear as I can. Flaps and slats. They are not used to slow down. In other words, if you're going fast and you need to decelerate and take off some energy from uh, from from the ship, right? You're not going to use flaps to slow down. I think that's a mistake a lot of people make is that they try to use the leading edge device, the trailing edge devices, uh, slats and flaps as a slow down mechanism. And in fact, it's not a slow down mechanism. It's actually a fly slow mechanism. So once you have slowed down by use of either spoilers or maybe a level flight segment or what have you, then we introduce the flaps in an effort to fly slow, right? But you don't want to use them to slow down. And I think that's really ultimately um, one of the main things I want you to get out of this video, apart from the difference between a leading edge flap and a slat and what they are, I will also want you to understand that utilize your high lift devices which is leading edge flaps and slats, we interchange that word, utilize these high lift devices to fly slower, not to slow down. Get the airplane slowed, and then to continue flying slow and slower, we start extending the flaps out. Um, obviously, when we extend these devices, depending on the flap setting, uh, some of them have some characteristics of helping the speed reduction, but you don't want to necessarily use it as a speed reducing tool. You want to fly it as a, you want to use it as a fly at a reduced speed tool. And that helps with not over speeding the flaps. That's really the only reason I'm bringing this up is because it can become fairly easy to over speed flaps if you're trying to use your flaps and slats as a slow down 
device as opposed to a fly slow device. All right, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to get back to work here. I do have a couple calls today. I have ground school that I have to do. And hopefully in uh, one of these, you're going to be at one of these sessions with us, either in person or virtual. I can tell you the next event we're going to have that you are more than welcome to is our open house. It's December 10th at 4 p.m. here in Miami, December 10th, 4 p.m. Uh, please come and enjoy some food and drinks with us here, some networking. And in addition to that, January 3rd and 4th, if you want to be AX3 certified, we're going to have this class uh set up to welcome our our new ax3 certified instructors i'm going to spend two days talking exclusively about how to deliver instruction it's a train the trainers program unlike anything the industry has seen uh, believe me when i tell you folks i have been through many many fundamentals of instruction courses uh, the challenge with all the courses that i've been through these fundamentals of instruction courses is that most of the time what we what the student's body is delivered is a powerpoint on a lot of theory so they'll stand here your instructor at that and i'm just telling you from experience and they will deliver what is rote memorization what's correlation the different phases and levels of learning uh, they talk about all these kinds of things uh, not to say i'm not going to touch on those but what i don't want is um, to have what most of these train the trainer programs deliver which is a lot of theory a lot of fluff frankly and in the end you walk out of here and you kind of feel like what can I apply of practical application what I want to do with AX3 is bring to you number one a set of values you have to establish a foundation of values as an instructor as to why you're teaching anything because with a good foundation of values whether you apply strategy or not you will be able to uh, uh, have the mindset and the aura to conduct yourself accordingly in a class and transmit data. They were calling me on the phone. All right, hey, uh, so I just want to share with you, let me back up a little bit. I was talking about the foundation of values. With a good uh, values foundation, whether you apply the strategies, which by the way, I'm going to go through in these two days, or not, if you have a good va uh, values foundation, you will go the extra mile to ensure you're transmitting the data effectively. Uh, without a values foundation, it's very um, difficult for you to be effective as an instructor because you're, it's possible that you're teaching for the wrong reasons. So we're going to establish that first thing day one. That's the number one thing. That's the number one thing. The second thing is the actual strategies. What, how, what and how to implement so that you actually communicate data effectively and ensure that you not only uh, transmit the data and that your audience, okay, being your students, are receiving, but they're not only receiving, they're begging you for more. Uh, that's the objective and that's what we're hopefully going to get you to with AX3 certification. It is January 3rd and 4th of 2022. Start your new year off with a bang, folks. I promise you this certification will serve you well. If you're interested in enrolling, ax3certification.com forward slash enroll. I'll see you here in Miami.